there are so many variations with different fan sizes and number of them that it is so hard to know what to expect from them. Well, this video is all about the comparison of those fans airspeed and noise wise based on my testing data plus a little bit something special. So let's find out more after this segment of today's sponsor, the PCB way. Have some unique modification ideas where rigidity and precision matters a lot? Then you should check out PCB way's professional CNC service which can allow you to transfer those ideas into reality. To try it all you have to do is upload a CAD file. All options are well explained and where needed have pictures to help you visualize different options. They also offer other high quality services with the same ease of order. Before, if you're interested, make sure to check it out and also get 5 bucks off for your first purchase with the link in the video description. So my goal with this video is to determine which fan or fan configurations are the best at aspects like the maximum performance, the most silent setup or the balance of both worlds. With that said, let's start with the basic design differences. 40x10 and 40x20 fans have wide airflow output openings that are almost across all the width and the height of the fans. Meanwhile, 50x15 has one that it is only around one third of its side. This means two things. First, the ducts on those two smaller fans will have to narrow down more, making it slightly harder to control the airflow. Second, the wider openings allow these fans to be more universal and for example they can be used to better cool the heatsink of the hot end if needed. And now the performance comparison. To test it, I designed all ducts for the different fans that we gradually transform into one of the openings of the anemometer. This gives a more relevant comparison as all print cooling ducts have smaller openings. So, first let's start with a simple graph. Here all blower fans were tested from 4000 rpm to their max rated speed. It doesn't take long to see that the bigger the better saying perfectly represents these results. By calculating average performance difference, the 40x20 fan produces around 26% more airspeed compared to a smaller 40x10 fan and the 50x15 fan raises the performance by another 41% giving around 56% improvement in total. I doubt anyone predicted the different ranking, but it's always good to know what relative performance we can expect from these fans. Next, a really interesting comparison aspect, the airspeed versus the noise level. The thing that surprised me right off the bat is that the 40x20 fan was almost as loud as the bigger one while producing 41% less airspeed on average. I have to say I expect way more from this fan, but looking at the performance and noise ratio, well, that makes it the worst at this aspect. Meanwhile, the 50x15 fan offered the best performance at the lowest noise levels. And because of that, I additionally tested it at 3000 rpm and it still performed the best, giving it the best airspeed to noise ratio of a single fan. But what about running two fans? And for simplicity, the airspeed numbers of two fans are doubled compared to one, but the noise levels are retested. This gives pretty interesting results, as in theory you could run two fans through two ducts at lower speeds and get those lower noise levels that you see in the graph. The combination of two 50x15 fans dominated even running them at 3000 rpm. This setup seems to be the most universal as you can get the best performance to noise ratio and if needed unmatched airspeed out of a duct. But again it is inferior as testing single duct versus dual duct performance is a video on its own. However I really wanted to see the apples to apples comparison and I came up with a deal like this, a test duct that fits two 40x10 fans as they were the quietest. And I have to say I'm impressed by this setup as it performed better in every aspect than 40x20 fan and had a better airspeed to noise ratio than previously praised 50 by 15 one. And if you find them that operates at higher speeds like 8000 rpm, they even come close to the performance levels of a single 50x15 fan at lower noise levels. But just take into account that the higher the rpm, the faster the fan will wear out and start to rattle. On 3D printers, fans not only wear out due to their own imbalance, but also from all the vibration produced by the moving print head. So longevity wise I would still go for a bigger 50x15 fan or a combo of them as they seem to be the most versatile option. 
but the bigger the fan, obviously the heavier it is. Interestingly enough, 40 by 20 fans can weigh almost as much as 50 by 15 ones, which also makes them the worst airspeed to weight ratio wise. 40 by 10 fans don't offer much performance, but at least they have the best ratio of them all. And finally, just for fun comparison, we well, added a 75 by 30 mm blower fan. It is definitely not a reasonable comparison, as realistic you would use at least two ducks for such a massive fan. But still, this big boy just demolished the competition purely by performance, and it came not that far behind from theoretical performance of two 50 by 15 fans. But the noise levels of it were the worst for the performance it offered, not to mention that airspeed just plummets at lower RPMs and weight to airspeed ratio is just abysmal. So to sum up the results, in my opinion if you're going to take your time upgrading the whole cooling system of your hot end, you probably want something that would perform better in all aspects. Usually in a lot of cases it is too much to ask, but in this one the two 50x15 fans are a clear choice. Running them at lower speeds not only would increase their longevity, but will also produce lower noise levels while still providing great cooling. The only downside of it that it's not that easy to fit two big fans and it will increase the total weight of a printhead, but I don't think that weight is that relevant on bed slinger 3D printers because you're not adding that much weight and the heat bed itself usually weights more in the first place, which is your number one high acceleration bottleneck. However, if you don't care that much about the noise, from my experience 150x15 fan of 2 to 3 watts is more than enough if you print below 100mm per second speeds and acceleration values that are more on the lower end like below 2000mm per second. It doesn't take much space and it's easy to mount as air intake is only on one side. On some printers I even use the fan as a structural part to make a lightweight and modular cooling setup. I wish I could suggest trying two 40x10 fans, but you need to run them at way high speeds to be effective and that is longevity killer. The ones I tested were with sleeve bearings and they produce less noise compared to ones with ball bearings. So with that in mind, 40x10 fans with ball bearings possibly could not even offer a better airspeed to noise ratio. What is your experience with all these fans, longevity and performance wise? It would be interesting to know what fans and duct configurations you're running on your 3D printers. So don't be shy and share it in the comments section. And by the way, I'm kinda hooked up on 3D printing related macro photography, I post high quality photos on my Twitter and Instagram, definitely something to check out if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Huge thanks to everyone who supported or still supports my work on Patreon, it means a lot. If you want to join this group of incredible people, check out the links in the video description or at the end of the video. So that's all from me and we'll see you next time.